again at the 2023 Rod McCravey Memorial Track and Field Invitational. And so far, Purdue out really well in lane six. And we'll see who gets to that cut-in mark first. Going to be Purdue here, but Michigan right on her heels. Isom of Michigan starting to close that down right after the break. Oh, and she catches her heel and goes down. Hopefully she'll be all right. She's up and moving. Actually, she picks up the baton and she's going to continue racing. The baton stayed in the track. It did not go on the outside of that barrier, so she's able to continue running. That fall actually didn't look that great, but good. I'm glad that she's up and doing well, but Robinson moved into the lead here for Ohio State on leg number two. Great turn from Robinson. Yeah, really nice job from Robinson to respond after that collision in front to say, okay, they've lost momentum. It's time for me to make a move and get out there. And she did great there to make sure she passed off in first. Ohio State really starting to pull away. Well, this is Wood from Ohio State. She's on that A team we saw. Her name listed under that personal best time for the Buckeyes earlier this year, looking really smooth and controlled as Purdue is playing chase. Now that's Savannah Sutherland of Michigan who got the baton as the second exchange for U of N, moving really well, overtaking Purdue now for second place. Yeah, Michigan is right back in it now. So really wise move from Isom, not only to give her teammates the opportunity to run, but they're back in the race. So really nice job from Sutherland to pull this back together after Isom took a, a fall. Rinda, she's gonna run the third leg here for the Michigan Wolverines, that's Mosley. We saw her in the 800, Rinda in the 600 earlier. We'll see how much closer Rinda can make this. And so far, that lead went from about 30 to about eight. Incredible. Yeah, I think by the time Rinda passes off, she'll be leading, which is just wild. Michigan way at the back after that fall in the first lap. And now they're coming all the way back into it, and they've taken the lead on Rinda's leg. And you can tell the audience understands what they're witnessing right here. I can only imagine, and we feel it here in the booth, the energy that's there on the track to be able to watch someone come from being on the ground and being in last to commanding lead and first going into this final exchange. Well, it only matters if you win the race, and look who they're passing off to, it's Zaya Holman. We know that Zaya Holman loves this event. We saw her in the 60, we saw her win the 200 earlier. Now this is her bread and butter. She's a closer, Sarah. Yeah, and she looks smooth and controlled. She's got that game face on. And a commanding lead for the Wolverines with a lap to go. Not only did they fall and fall behind, they are just absolutely putting on a clinic here. How did they do it? Opening split for Zaya Holman, 25-24. Her teammates there on the backstretch cheering. Then the Michigan Wolverines from the track on the ground to first place in the women's 4x4 relay. Remarkable, and there you mentioned they'll feel the energy of this crowd at the University of Michigan indoor track building. That was wild because it was one thing to just get back in it, but then didn't just completely dominate is a second thing. You asked how they got back in it, Dean. And after Isom's fall, Savannah Sutherland split 51-4. That's not only is that a huge mark, but she split three seconds faster than anyone else on the second leg. So she...